growing your botany could save your life one day. Let me explain. Did you know that daffodils, like this one here, are some of the most beautiful of the spring flowers? Yet, they're actually incredibly toxic. They could kill you. I thought it would taste really bad. They could kill your dog. Would you eat this? And they could actually kill your roses. But if you know just a little bit about the botany, you're gonna be totally safe. Before we understand the toxic threat that a daffodil here poses, we have to understand a little bit about what makes these plants so incredibly cool. Because it's actually the flowers and their toxicity which allows them to thrive in their environment. Haley, can you help me? Oh yeah, let's film some daffodils. First, when I say daffodil, I'm referring to plants in the genus Narcissus. In total, there's about 160 different species in this genus, and there's a thousand or more cultivars. New ones are coming out all of the time. If you're a plant nerd, you could spend your whole life on daffodils. And that's in part because these flowers are so cool. Okay. Flower awesomeness, part one. <laughs> First of all, you have to get down and you have to look at these flowers. And then here's the big question, where are the petals? Take this. Normally I'd say something like this was the petal. Yeah, the white ones, right? Yeah, the white ones, but they're like attached here. That's unusual. Really to understand why these are cool, you have to understand basic botany of a normal flower. But you might ask, well, what does a normal flower look like? Here's a quick refresher. This represents a typical flower. In the middle, you have the male and female parts. But we're most concerned with the showy bit here on the outside. That's the petals, collectively called the corolla. And outside of that, typically green, are sepals, collectively called the calyx. Pretty much all the flowers in our yard have the same anatomy, like a typical flower. Um, I'll show you these peach trees first. So a typical flower looks a little bit like this. Sepals on the outside, petals on the inside and then you have all the sexual organs in there. Here's a good one. Sepals on the outside, petals on the inside. Pairs are good. Sepals, petals. Sepals are green, petals are white. But daffodils are completely different. They're totally insane. The sepals and the petals are indistinguishable. So this outer whorl here, they call tepals because you actually don't have sepals on the outside. And then on the inside, this is the corolla. So it's like merged petals all into one tubular trumpet-like shape. It's a little bit of a nerdy botany thing, but if you get down and look at these flowers, it's just so cool how unique they are. That's where the bees go, right in there. So different. different. There you go. Now let's get back to the toxicity and why it's so beneficial to the plants. First of all, daffodils come out first thing in the spring. I mean, it just turned spring, and daffodils are on their way out here in our garden, but um, they came up at the very beginning, and we have a lot of deer. In fact, I can see deer footprints all over the yard, and to a deer, you're looking around, there's not a whole lot of green out. It's a little deceptive in my yard because I planted winter rye, but normally there's not a lot of green and you have a nice big munchy daffodil here. And so you think, well, that would be the most vulnerable thing. Fortunately, deer hate it because it's got all these toxic glycosides and alkaloids in it. And it's really gross for a deer. And that's also gross for anybody to eat it. Maybe I'll eat one at the end and see if it's also gross. Studies indicate that there are close to two dozen toxic alkaloids in a daffodil. Now that's just a fancy way of saying bad stuff in the plant, which is part of why you don't want to eat it. And one of the most common is lycorine, which is probably the most abundant of the toxic alkaloids. It was also the first to be identified, which causes nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, it could also potentially cause death. But this toxin helps make sure things don't eat it. Make sure things don't dig up the bulb, which is where all the energy is, and eat that. If a cat or dog eats the stem or the bulb, then they're gonna be in a world of trouble. They're gonna start throwing up. Uh, you're probably gonna call poison control. You're gonna rush them to the ER. And occasionally they die, which is bad. It's also pretty well known that if you pick these daffodils and you put them in a vase of, say, roses, it will kill the vase life of those roses. Like, it'll half it. So if you're gonna put daffodils in with roses, then you wanna make sure that you kind of wash out the stems of these daffodils a few times, then stick them in, and then you should probably be okay. So I couldn't find any reports <laughs> that talk about people in today's age, which have eaten a daffodil and died. A lot of people gotten sick. The stems are apparently really gross. Problematically, the stem actually tastes okay. I thought it would taste really bad. 
It's supposed to have cal calcium oxalate crystals in it too, which can really cause burning and sensation in your throat. When I tried wisteria, I thought it was gonna taste like that, where it like burned my throat. Don't eat too much, because there's toxic glycosides in them. Nothing burning in my mouth or anything. I'm kind of curious what the flower petals taste like too. Now, normally you wouldn't try this at home, by the way. The only reason I'm doing it is the reports indicate that it's just nausea and vomiting generally, and that it's really hard to eat. Um, but they're not going to kill you right away, which is the only reason I, I put it in my mouth. Sometimes I just taste it and then I spit it out. Okay, I'm doing this for you. No, you don't have to. It tasted like orchids is what it tastes like. And I come across plants that are really bad. This is actually more dangerous because it's not so bad tasting. Um, given that there are toxic compounds in it, you don't want to get any of it in your stomach and usually you're prevented from getting it in your stomach if it tastes bad. If you taste this, I would hope it would be gross. Just no, don't eat it. That's really simple. The most common problem is that these plants are mistaken for onions. So I wanna show you the bulb of this plant here. Uh, this one here, it's still in the ground, but I'll dig it up just a little bit. Obviously planted this one a little bit too shallow. That right there is what people sometimes think is an onion. And this is where the botany is really important. If you know your plants well enough, then you can look at that and you can be like, that's clearly not an onion. It's, it's a little bit like saying, well, what's the difference between a horse and a donkey? Well, if you know your horses, it's just so obvious, but it might be hard to describe. And it's the same thing here. Because you see, if you know your botany, it could just save your life one day. This is continued education for the book Haley and I wrote. Haley's helping me behind the camera. Hi. I'm Haley. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Stone Age Man. It's all about reconnecting and understanding nature, trying to, in my case, get people to love this natural world that we're in because I just find so much fascination with everything around me. I started out wanting to study animals, by the way. I, I got a master's degree doing just that, and then I realized it's actually all about the plants because the plants are the habitat. If you have a good habitat, then everything is thriving around you. And it's just cool to like go into your backyard and look at daffodils and all these different cool things. I loved the movie Big Fish and her favorite, her favorite flower and that is daffodils. So her man ends up getting this entire field of daffodils just because she likes daffodils. This one smells super sweet, almost like, like a honeysuckle. It's almost like a perfume sweet floral, like a gardenia. You know what, I'm gonna get August to do the very end of the wrap. Like and subscribe. See you next time. Bye.